Hey everyone, Dennis Cortez here. In today's video, I will be going over how I organize my design system and just normal regular files for Figma. I wanna preface this and say, this is not the best way to do it. I don't know what is the best way to do it, but this is how I prefer to do it personally. So I've been doing this at Mothership, at Dave, and in all of my personal projects, including taste notes. I'm just gonna go through some examples with taste notes and even show you some of the mothership breakdown of the design system that we use. And I'm gonna be showing you one, how I do it where there's only one file, and two, how I do it where there's multiple files and I keep a design system file separate. So let's get right into it. So right here, I have set up a bit of a diagram, just kind of showing my overall approach to organizing my files. The way that I like to do this is I have my flow name. I actually like to name my flows on the left side so that it's easy for somebody else to come into the file and kind of see what each of these flows are that they need to be looking at. So they can come in here, they can see that. And then I go through the steps from left to right. I start with the beginning of that flow and go all the way to the end. With each one, I do steps for each one. Between each of those step artboards, I like to have 80 pixels between there. Like I've made videos before, the eight point grid is the best thing in my opinion for design. With that, I like to keep my frames a certain space away that's on the eight point grid as well. From left to right, I keep them 80 pixels so that you have some more spacing than you would vertically. You have more spacing left and right, so it kind of gives a little bit of a separation from those steps. Then between each of the states, I do 40 pixels. So I do half the amount that I do horizontally, I do that vertically. And the reason for that is because these screens below are actually tied to the screen up top. When you're designing, you want to try and show all the different states that you have to have. So typically you'll have a default state, you'll have like an active state, a filled state, and maybe even an error state. Most of the time, that's the type of states that you'll have for inputs. Obviously, it'll be different depending on what app you have. So you might have some other state that's just random specifically for your app. So if you need to show like a certain state for a list, like the way that it's showed when it's active versus inactive versus disabled, etc. So kind of depends on that. Rule of thumb here is to have your states shown vertically. As an example here, I have this flow one name. So left to right, I have the steps. So I have step one, step two, step three, et cetera, et cetera. For the step one, this is the only one that has different states. So for example, I will be showing an active state here below, and then I show a filled state. So I like to show the order of operations from top to bottom. For example, you'll start within the default or like an empty state, then you'll go to active where the input is actually being interacted with, and you'll go to a filled state. So after it's been unfocused. Another note is I like to order my layers from top left to bottom right. Take a look here on the left panel. So the very top layer I have is the flow one name. So with this name, it's gonna be the top one. And then from left to right, I start adding these steps. So I have the step one, then I have the step one active state, then the step one filled state, and then it goes over to the next row once you reach the bottom of this one. So now it's over to step two, over to step three, et cetera, et cetera. And then between my flow name and my actual first step, I like to keep this at 240. Uh, don't ask me why, it's just a random one that I came up with. I like the spacing that it gives, it gives some good breathing room. And then the reason I do that is that I do 240 between the flow names as well. So if I have two flows, for example, in this one that I'm showing, then this top one, I want to give it some breathing room so that you can go through and kind of read these easily. So this first flow will have 240 pixels between it and the next flow. So with that, again, we give it some good spacing and make it easy to read for somebody else coming into this file. Giving you an actual example of this, I'm going to use taste notes, which by the way, I launched the new website last week. If you didn't see it, go ahead and check it out. It's at tastenotes.app. With this real example, uh, we have the review flow here. So for this is one of the main flows in taste notes. It starts from the beginning of when they would land on the home page and how this would look. This is obviously a wireframe view that I'm working on. This is the first step that they would go to. Then they would go to the next step with entering the coffee info. We have 80 pixels between them. And then once they finish this, they get into the questions. So these questions, each of them have uh, separate states between them. So we have the unfilled state, which is like the default state that I was mentioning. Then we have the active state. So what does it look like when a user is actually clicking onto this input? So we have the keyboard up, buttons become active, 
And then finally, we have the filled state. So after they click off of the keyboard input, then we'll show this state as well. So then going to the next one, we have the 80 pixels between this one as well. And then we show the next step in that flow. I like to name my artboards based on that too. So it's in the review flow. This is the roaster screen and it's the unfilled state. Same thing here. So it's the review flow. This is the coffee name screen and it's in the unfilled state, for example. So this would continue on until I get to the end of this flow. There's actually seven questions here, but just for example sake, I have these three. So say that this is the end of this flow. We're going on to the next one, which is the profile. So for this next flow, I'm still working on it, but just to show you an example, I have this profile flow and it's 240 away. And then between each of these steps, I would have the 80 pixels between them. So this is how I keep these organized. This is what I do at Mothership 2 because it's super scalable. You can do like huge massive files and still do them in this order. It's still very legible and still easy to get through as long as you're doing this correctly. So for the next example, I want to show a little bit of the design system file that we have at Mothership. So the difference here is that for this file, we actually use it throughout multiple files. So we have to keep this as a separate one and we have its own pages, its own organization and everything. So this is how I've always done design system files and how I organize them to make it easier for everybody at the company to go through and be able to use. I won't show the actual components here just because this is Mothership work, but as you can see, I like to organize my pages based on the components types that we have and I usually do this in alphabetical order so it's easy to read through. I try and keep it as simple as possible and I group things as, as often as I can. So we have actions first so that'll be just your buttons, your components. So these are what I was talking about in my design system video. If you haven't seen it, go ahead and check it out. These are where the custom components that aren't like applicable to most applications. So in here we have like stuff that's specifically for logistics and delivery flows. Then in communication, we have like toasts and messages and banners and things like that. Controls, we have radios, check marks, etc. Glyphs, we have icons. Inputs, self-explanatory, we just have text field inputs for the most part. And then we have iOS, so that's components that are specific to iOS. So like the top bar, the status bar, home indicator at the bottom, for example. Then we have lists, so these are like the cells that you use that you can stack them up to make lists. And we also have like sections in here. We have miscellaneous, so this is just random things like dividers or some sort of illustration for example, that we need to use. Navigation is navigation that we use between both Android and iOS. So this would be like your tab bar, for example, or if you have a top bar that you share between the different OSs, that's where we put this stuff. And then finally, we have the styles. So just basically all the colors and stuff that we use. This is more so for reference than anything. And yeah, so then finally, we just have like internal stuff. So we put like notes in here. I like to make note components so that I can put these underneath of frames. I make them exactly the size of the frames that I'm using. So for example, on iOS, I would do like a 375. Have it so it's directly underneath the frame. And then I do 16 pixels of space between it. Because again, you want to keep it on the eight point grid. And then finally, we just have the cover. Um, so I like to have covers for all of my Figma files because it just makes it so much easier for you to find things when you're searching in the uh, browse view. So that's an overview of how I organize my design system files as well as my normal files. Like I said, I use this for both personal projects and for projects at work. I've used this at Mothership currently, and I've used it in the past, like at Dave and Metalab. This has been super helpful for us to keep things organized, making sure that we have an organized file and keeping the same distance between things. And overall, it just makes it a lot more legible and readable for both designers and non-designers as well. I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments. Reminder that I do have a Patreon, so if you wanna get these videos early and get any extra content that I post there, I post a lot of snippets of the taste notes work and like behind the scenes stuff. So if that interests you, feel free to check it out at patreon.com slash shyboytm. I have links in the description as well. Follow me on social media for more behind the scenes and I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you all later. Bye.